Hi, I'm Richard from Electric Classic Cars, and in this week's episode, I'm going to be telling you why these beauties give me headaches. They're one of the most popular cars we get through the workshop, but they're also one of the most difficult to convert. Let's get into it. Now, to explain why these things are so difficult to convert, I need to start with a little bit of a history lesson. So these are what's known as a Volkswagen Type 2. The Type 1 was the Beetle, obviously, and the Type 2 was the code designation that these things were given. And how were these born? So what happened was there was a, a Dutch distributor for Volkswagen that came to the factory one day. I think his name was Ben Pon, I think it was. Uh, if, it, if it's not, I'll correct it down below. He came to the factory and noticed there was a... Um, a vehicle which was distributing parts around the workshop which is basically a flatbed here and there was a cab at the back and all it was was a glorified VW Beetle floor pan and he thought hang on a minute that's a fantastic idea for a commercial vehicle if you just put the cab at the front rather than the back and have you know the rest of it uh, uh, like a pickup truck or a van that'll be a great commercial vehicle that'll sell so he drew a little bit of a sketch We'll put it up on screen here now. Just a pencil sketch of what he thought conceptually it could be. And Volkswagen ran with it, essentially. And the Type 2 was born. It's gone through a lot of iterations since then. These are obviously the first iteration of the Volkswagen split screen. But even then, there was different versions, if you like, the VW split screen. Then came the bay window, like my early bay. And then the Type 25 in the UK, it was called Type 3, everybody, everywhere else, and so on and so forth. And they still make VW transporters to this day. So they started life as a commercial vehicle. Now, keep that in mind. These were designed as commercial vehicles. So when they came out, there was a panel van, if you like. They were designed to carry 750 kilos of weight from there to there in, in the low bay, if you like, and later uh, a ton of weight, and you're probably wondering why did they change? Well, initially, this came out with a Beetle engine, obviously a 1200 single port Beetle engine, which couldn't pull the skin off your mother's rice pudding, quite frankly. And then in 1962, I think it was, they upgraded to 1500 single port, a little bit more power, not much more power, I have to admit. So then they could carry a ton of weight. So as I say, commercial vehicle, van, um, also there was a pickup uh, or crew cab, like my uh, early bay, for instance. But they were designed to carry a certain amount of weight in between the axles there and there. And I'll come back to that point later. But notice I've not said Volkswagen camper once yet, because Volkswagen did not, I repeat, did not make campers. They made vans, either panel vans, microbuses, which is essentially a minibus, or the pickups or the crew cabs. They didn't make campers. There was conversion companies that did that, and that's what we're going to talk about next. So a camper like this didn't start life as a camper. It would have started life either as a microbus with the windows already in, or a van, and they would have cut the windows in. And then what would have happened is a conversion company, of which there were plenty around in the 1960s. You had Devon, uh, Westphalia, uh, Banbury, Banbury, Banbury. Um, those are just the three that come to the top of my head. And then there was probably even more. Um, there were people doing DIY camper conversions, etc. So there was a huge variability, if you like, of the interiors. And those interiors also changed through the years as they brought out different versions within those different companies as well. So now you're getting an idea as to why a camper is a nightmare to convert to electricity because the interiors change around. Now this one is obviously a custom interior and we've done an episode on an original 1960s conver converted bus. Click, click on the link above. I'm just trying to think, I can't remember if it was a Devon or a Banbury. Can you remember what that green bus was? Not a clue, no. No, there was a plaque on it. But anyway, it was a beautiful, all original interior. It smelt original as well. It had the canvas uh, beds at the top and that, configuration-wise, had a bench seat here and also a bench seat there as well. But that's the problem with camper interiors. The interiors change about so much. This one, for instance, has got a, a stool here. It's got the, all the kitchenette cabinets and stuff over there with the fridge and the hob and sink. And over here, it's got the rock and roll bed. 
Now, rock and roll bed, you're probably wondering, you know, is that to do with music? No, it's to do with the fact that a rock and roll bed, kind of like you rock and roll it to come out, and then you've got a double bed. And a lot of camper conversions have that. Now, as far as where do the batteries go, I think that's what we're going to cover off next. Now, you could be saying out there, Rich, why don't you just use the standard area, which doesn't change on any of the vehicles, which is the engine bay? Well, I'll tell you why. It's a question of weight. Because when you take the engine and gearbox out of something like this splitter, you're probably taking around about, or you've got to take out, out the fuel as well and the fuel tank. So you're probably taking out something in the order of 190 kilos, let's say. Then you've got to put an electric drive unit back in, say 120 kilos. That leaves you 70 kilos of weight that you can put back in this area that you could say battery pack. 70 kilograms doesn't give you much battery pack. I mean, 70 kilos is what, about 15 kilowatt hours of battery pack, and the optimal you want in a camper is around about 60 to 65. We put, you know, 80. My crew cab, for instance, has a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack in, but that's a commercial vehicle. So, you know, this is a problem where to put the battery pack. And bear in mind, the load carrying area in a, a VW Type 2 should be in between the axles. So that's why I don't fill this space with battery pack. We used to, way back when, put a battery pack in here, but no bigger than 30 kilowatt hours. And now what we do is we leave this area as a boot so you've got a bit more luggage space and we put the weight where it should be in between the axles. Right, now we're inside, out of the cold wind. And I can't believe Tim's worn shorts today because it's freezing outside. Well, some, summer season, isn't it? It's not summer. But I am glad we've come in because it is a bit chilly out today. You guys are so lucky you can't see his legs. <laughs> anyway, get inside butt tracked by his legs. Batteries, I'm talking about batteries still. So this bus here, this camper has a 66 kilowatt hour battery pack. The white one over there, that van has a 75 kilowatt hour battery pack. Uh, and as I say, 65 kilowatt hours is around about what you want and what you can get away with in a bus. Uh, my bay window, my crew cab, um, that's got a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, but that's not carrying the weight of a camper interior in, for instance. So anything from 60 up to 100 kilowatt hours is what you want to aim for for a VW camper. Now, where have I put the batteries in this? Well, obviously, you know, 60, what did I say, 66 kilowatt hour battery pack, it's about 450 kilos. You do not want that hanging over the uh, rear axle, as I say, for you know safety reasons. You'll have all the weight hanging way over there, no weight on the front. So we need to put the weight where this vehicle was designed to carry the weight, which is in here. So we've got most of the battery pack underneath this seat here, and this still does the rock and roll to turn into a bed and also we've turned the stool over there into a battery box as well so the battery pack is essentially hidden underneath what was you know already in here if you like the stool and the main seat and you might think oh you've lost so much storage space well we've gained a little bit at the back not quite the same amount but pretty close we've gained storage space in the engine bay now as well and while we're in here I may as well take them through the camper interior Tim you're right with that yeah, let's yep, do it. Yep, he says, right, I've got the nod from Tim. So, what have we got? Well, we've got induction hob. Now, obviously, most campers have a gas hob, or the petrol ones do, obviously. But because we're sitting you know, on a massive battery pack that can run your house for probably a week, we may as well make use of that. And actually, all the things in here run off the big battery pack. When it was a petrol car, you would have had a leisure battery. You would have a 12 volt battery to start the vehicle and then another 12 volt battery to essentially run all the bits in, inside, uh, which wouldn't really be enough to run an induction hobby. You could, but then you'd need a really big induction um, uh, leisure battery and a DC to DC converter to run that. Well, we don't need any of that because we're already sitting on a massive battery pack. So make use of that with a DC to AC converter. And that's what runs things like the hob. Um, you've got the fridge down here. Sorry, Tim, that's opening, Any beer in there? It's opening up the wrong way. No beer. It's a broken fridge because <laughs> fridge, it's got no beer in. And then you've got the sink here. Um, you've got your controls for everything there. Uh, and over here, 
You've got the control panel. So most campers have a control panel like this that usually controls things like the um, leisure battery getting charged up, etc. What we've got is things like V2L, so that's vehicle to load. So if I switch that on, hear a little bit of a noise, clicks. Now that means that that is now enabling all the 240 volts in here. So the plugs here, for instance, the induction hob, um, and other bits and pieces. Uh, I can also turn the fridge on or off. Uh, you've also got water, so the water pump, and what's that, lights as well, so I can switch the lights on. Oh, there we go. Ooh, uh. Very swish. So there's your control panel. Uh, you've got your USB chargers here, and over here, uh, you'll probably have to get a close-up of this. Oops, it's just gone off. That is your BMS display. So that tells you all you need to know about your battery pack, your temperature, your cells, uh, state of charge, etc., um, and other stuff like that. Obviously, it sends the state of charge information to the main uh, gauge on the dash anyway, you can, so you can see how much is left. But, yep, that's pretty much it. You've got storage up here as well, storage in there. You've got storage here. You've got... You know, all sorts of storage in these cabinets here. Obviously, you've gained a little bit of storage because there's no gas bottle in here either. So it's not short of storage. You know? So even though we've lost a bit of storage underneath here, and as I say, gained a little bit in the engine bay, it's still got plenty of usable storage. And there's even a table here which sits there. So it's a really, really practical vehicle. So on that note, we're testing these vehicles, both of them at the moment, that's why they're not sparkly clean, because we're road testing them, which is the, my favourite part of every build. So, question to Tim. Which vehicle do you want to go out for a spin in? So, come on in, Tim. Which one do you want to go in? Um, which, uh, well, which camper do you want to uh, go for a spin in? <laughs> well, you know, I've never really, really got campers. I, knew I don't this was going. really get what the attraction is with a with a VW camper. Yeah. They all look a bit slow and well, these aren't slow. Well, these those aren't. No, but the old ones are. These slow. do something that yeah. VW campers <laughs> have never done ever in their lifetime: accelerate uphill and overtake. So yeah, I've never really understood the VW camper thing, right? But I do really like the uh, commercial ones. So I like the ones that are like a proper van, and I like the ones like that are my crew pickup. Cab. Yeah, yeah, I like the, the no, usable I get ones. That. I mean, that's why I've got my crew I think they the really look cool. And the best one I ever saw was, do you remember at Goodwood, they had that one that was done as a race transporter with the, um, oh, Porsche, the Porsche racing car, all yeah. the Porsche badging on it. Yeah. Now, that, that was, was one cool. of the coolest that ones I've cool. ever seen. Yeah. So my choice is, is definitely the white one, the van. Cool. And as you know, I'm building my garage. I thought we could get the builder's merchants and uh, put some, uh, make it work for its living and put some building stuff in the back. No, not going to happen, mate. <laughs> Never going to happen. What about bikes then? We could get some bikes in the back. Yeah, get some bikes in the back. Yeah. yeah let's oh, do that. Oh, no. Does that mean I have to go on a bike? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, come on. In. Let's take the van out for a spin. I'll put the camper back in the workshop and, yeah, let's pop in the white van. Right, all in? Yeah, fit a treat, look. Loads of room. Loads all of room. All in and secure. Ideal, isn't it? Sure, it's electric. Oh, yeah. Is it? Oh, yeah. Is mine electric? No. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, just thought, go and get your charger. Yeah. I want to try something later on. Okay. Ready to go? No. <laughs> Let's go. Absolutely 100% now with my decision. I much prefer the commercial um, early buses than the camper. I'm I mean, really I'm, not into campers. I'm not going to disagree with you. I mean, I don't have a camper. I've got a you know, crew camp. But uh, it's just so useful, isn't it? To, to, the, today, I wanted to say the camper in. because it's freezing cold outside. <laughs> I wanted to stay inside and have a cup of coffee and some biscuits. But no, you made me go out into the cold and uh, go on a bike. I can't even remember the last time I was on a bike. Apparently it's like riding a bike. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, you never forget it. So we fitted two bikes in the back there. No problem, there's loads of room. I mean, you could probably Come get on. another three in there, you reckon? So you could get about six bikes in the back. Yeah. And building materials? No. <laughs> not a couple of blocks. You building your garage. Of of sand. No. I 
I, mean, I mentioned earlier that you know I wasn't that keen on these early buses mainly because they're a bit slow aren't they and the amount of times I've been <laughs> stuck behind one uh, on the way to Cornwall or wherever yeah. but with these conversions they're no longer slow are they oh, yes, so mate. it looks cool I get that and it now drives like a like a, a modern vehicle I mean we got a Tesla small drive unit in the back which you know peak wise you're talking about 300 horsepower but we tune that way back I should hope so yeah um, whenever we put big motors in the back. I mean, that's not a big motor. I've got a, a large Tesla drive unit at the back of my crew cab, which is, what, 450 horsepower. But whenever you do any conversion, electric, you're probably going to increase the power. So we always put disc brakes uh, on the front. In fact, disc brakes all around if you can. Upgrade the suspension a little bit. Uh, stiffer anti-roll bars. And any opportunity to improve the suspension and handling the bus, we always take. Now you're in trouble, look. Old camper and a big hill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not in this. Ready? Yeah, go, go. That's something you'd never know what you would You wouldn't get that in a normal one, would you? I better slow down quick. It's far too fast. Yeah, accelerating up a hill in a camper. So what's the range then? Uh, this one's probably something in the order of about 180 mile range driving normally. Wow. Uh, camper with a 65, 66 kilowatt hour battery pack probably I don't know 150 to 160 you know if you drove a bit more sensibly you get more range plenty of range to get to the builders merchants and back not go and pick up bits and pieces for your your garage Right, got the bikes out, and uh, I'm getting even more worried now about this whole escapade. But before <laughs> we go any further, I want to check the V2L works. Yeah. So can we try the uh, battery charger on your battery? Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll uh, then we'll, I'm trying to delay the inevitable of going out on these bikes. <laughs> yeah, I'll get it out now. Let's check. Unlike the camper, this hasn't got any three-pin plugs inside. So I brought a little gadget uh, to plug into the Type 2 charge socket, but to before I can use that, I've got to switch the V2L on. So let me go and do that. There we go. And I can hear the systems all fired up in there. So this little gadget, you've got type two that side, and this side is your normal 240 volt sort of, uh, um, well, it's European and UK in there. So I'm gonna pl plug that in there. Now I need what you've got in your hands, which is your charger for your bike. There's the charger. All right. And plug that in there. Do you need to plug the battery in first? How does it work? Yeah, plug the battery in first. Plug so I've got the normal battery plug by taking battery it out of the in. bike. It's a funky looking plug, isn't it? There you go. Okay, all right, hold all that there. I'm just going to plug it in because I just want to see if it works. All right, ready? Bang! There you go. Hey, look at that. What's it say? No, it's about just under half charged. Good. Let's so. not put any more charge in it because <laughs> I want to have some... Uh, well, I don't want you to have any charge because I've got no charge <laughs> whatsoever because I'm not an electric bike. So, Cool, that works then. Right. Uh, have I delayed it long enough now? Do we have to yeah, go on the bike? Yeah, it's time bikes? to go. Uh, right. <laughs> I don't know what I'm more nervous about. The fact I haven't been on a bike in about 20 years or the fact you've brought me to a location that looks like it's where you'd bury a body. <laughs> it does a bit, doesn't it? But the fact you've not got a shovel with you, I'm and assuming it's, well, I'm safe. And don't forget, biking in Wales always means uphill. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah. Are we not going down that way? No, nope. uphill mm. to start. And you're on the electric one. That's typical. right. Right, I think that's enough waffle. I've got to go biking now. Come on, let's get on with it. Right, hope you enjoyed this episode, boys and girls, and we'll hopefully see you on the next one. <laughs> All right. Oh, how does this go again? Oh. <laughs>